See these things that we're doing are commands. They're not suggestions. They're not a deal. It's not let's make a deal. The Lord said this is the deal. And has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. See, we're real cool at, at seeming like we're, we're holier than now. And then we ask God for wisdom and, and just decisions. And then we sit there and wonder, why is not God not answering me? What is up with that? It's because we're being false. We're wearing a mask. We seem eager, but we're not doing what he's commanded us to do. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. And see, so many times we wait on God to come near us. God says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. It's up to us to draw near to God and he'll draw near to us. Why have we fasted, they say, and you've not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you've not noticed? Lord, I've been doing all kinds of cool stuff for you, and you ain't even listening to me. You're not even watching. I don't get any praise and glory. I'm not noticing any cool effect from what I've been doing. Lord, what is up with it? We've got to die to ourselves. We talked last Sunday about being in Christ and Christ being in us. And when we do that, then it's not about us anymore. I fasted for a whole day, God. I give it up for a day. And you ain't done nothing for me. What is up? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please. And exploit all your workers. Here's the deal where these guys are coming. They're coming to a fast. They're showing up, actually, is all they're doing. They do whatever they please. They haven't given up anything. A fast is where you sacrifice something for God to be able to bless you and, and work in your life. And they're just doing what they please anyhow. They call it a fast. You can put a chair in the garage and call it a car, but the thing's still a chair. And then it says you exploit all your workers. You know what? I need a bunch of money, man. And I'll go to the temple and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll act holy, but you guys keep working. Master, we'd love to go too. We'd love No, you're going to work. You stay here and you work and I'll be back. Guys and gals, if you've got businesses and you've got workers working for you and they ask you to go to church on Sunday morning, let them. It's serious. There's a repercussion for it right here in Scripture. You know God can stall time. You might have a tub of parts you've got to get done, but God will slow it down. He'll speed the machine up later and it'll work out. Don't exploit your workers. Don't exploit your friends and cause them to do something you won't do yourself. That's one thing I've tried to pride myself in as pastor of Destiny Family Faith. I try to do what I ask you to do. Even if Jerry Barker does get mad at me. You're a pastor. You go home and rest. We'll get there. That's what he told me. I ain't nobody but the, just the body of Christ. And then it gets worse. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife. And in striking each other with wicked fists. Here we are trying to be righteous and holy. And we end up fighting and smacking somebody with a closed fist. And we've already talked about the closed fist. When it's closed, you can't give away or you can't receive. A closed fist is no good. It never Turns out right. Never. We'll do whatever it takes to get what we want. That's bad news. Man, if I crash the doors open, and sorry for that. You cannot fast as you do today 
and expect your voice to be heard on high. Guys and gals, if we're not being who God has called us to be, if we know what to do and we're not doing it, it ain't working. And for some of us in here, we're wondering, why, Lord, where are you at? I need, I want, I have to have. It's because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. You can't fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. You can't watch pornography. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do it because I've commanded you not to. It's serious stuff. Is this the kind of fast I've chosen? He's asking them. This is what you've been doing. Is this what I've asked you to do? There are so many Sundays I stand up here and preach, and, and I'm, I'm hoping that you all hear it and listen, and I, I pray to God that you can get application out of it for your life. Now he's going to say, is this the kind of fast I've chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Do you think it's cool for us just to come here to Destiny on Sunday and then not serve the Lord the rest of the week? Nah, that's not good. Not good. We're to have him on our heart every day. Is it only for bar bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Do we just get on our knees and say, Oh, Lord, bless me today, and, and I just pray that the stupid people at work won't mess with me today? And, and I got money to fill the car with gas, and, and you go on and ramble and ramble and ramble, and you never praised him. You never gave him the glory or anything for anything. Is it just about bowing your knees like a reed in the wind and, and praying? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? It's not just going through the motions, guy and gals. We have to be who we have been called to be. There are so many people in the world looking for real today. I so appreciate Nate and Tanya calling the, the youth group Get Real. It's a place where the kids can get real. That's what they're seeking for. They're hungry for it. Is, this, is not this the kind of fasting I've chosen? He's asking them. They know what to do, but they're not doing it. He said, listen, guys, is this what I really called you to do? Here's what he's called them to do. To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke and to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Our job at Destiny Family of Faith is to set the oppressed free. There are people that are hurting so bad they need Jesus and they don't know what they need. And they're yoked to bondage. It says to untie the cords of the yoke. The yoke is strapped on an ox or a horse with a harness or rope. And it says to take that yoke off and let it fall. <coughs> set free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. We can untie that yoke and set people free from bondage. And you know what they'll do five minutes later? Pick that sucker back up and put it on. And what he says, and to break every yoke. He not only wants to set you free and untie that yoke, he's going to break it so you can't pick it up and put it back on again. Because if you're set free, you're free. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? Is you wandering around, John? Is you wandering around needing shelter? Blessed you. God blessed you, didn't he? I'll be clear blue. When you see the naked, the clothing, We've got people in this congregation that bless other people with clothes. It's just amazing. And not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Listen, you got a, a family member, a church family member in need, you can't turn away from them. 
Now you might have to do some correction in the process and change their stinking thinking. But you got to take care of them, their flesh and blood. And you're saying, Mike, the people set beside me ain't my flesh and blood. Yes, they are, because you're all cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You're all adopted sons and daughters. We're related, whether you like it or not. Oh, I love this scripture. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. When you're doing what God has commanded you to do, and you're serving others, and it's not about you anymore, the light, the glory of the Lord just breaks out. And it's showing out of you every way you look. Your righteousness will go before you. We're to follow Jesus. The righteousness, the glory is ahead of us. And all we got to do is follow it. Pretty simple. But man, can we get lost on the way. We get blinded and lose our path. And I love this. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. God's got your butt covered. I've said so many times, it talks in Ephesians about the armor that we're to put on. It never says nothing about your butt, but it's covered right here. <laughs> the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. You're covered, guys and gals. You don't have to be in the mess. You're set free from it. He broke the yoke. He untied it and broke the yoke from you. Then, after this is all done, then you'll call and the Lord will answer. Now how much more plain does that need to be? He sets the guidelines. You're to die to yourself. You're to share your food with the hungry. You're to provide the poor wanderer with shelter. When you see the naked, you're to clothe him. You're not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then you will call on the Lord and he'll answer. See, we have an obligation as the body of Christ, as the church of Jesus Christ on this earth, to do what he's called us to do. And Destiny Family of Faith has tried so hard to obey these scriptures right here. And we've tried to love the people and, and people need love everywhere. There's not a person walking this earth that doesn't need love. That's why Jesus created him in his image, so you can fill that hole with love. God is love, John says. Then you'll call and the Lord will answer. You'll cry for help, and he'll say, here am I. I don't know about y'all, but that's pretty comforting to me. Because you can take that to the bank. It's real. It's the word of the Lord. And then it says if. It means we got to do something here. Something's going to happen. It says if. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and the malicious talk, you ain't going to believe what Tom did. You ain't going to believe it. And that's why our church is shut up. They've clammed up because they're afraid that finger pointing, that malicious talk is going to happen after we leave here. There's no room for it, guys and gals. We cannot do that. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and the malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. If you worry about somebody else's needs, man, are you going to reap what you sowed. And it's only until you sow seed can you get a harvest. And there are so many of us praying to God for the harvest and we ain't sowed nothing. A stupid dandelion won't even grow unless it's planted, it's sowed. It's 
So guy just lets the wind blow and drop it in your yard that looks like a golf course. If you spend yourselves in behalf, it's going to cost us, guys and gals. And so many times when we are talking to baby Christians or people we're, we're wanting to lead to the Lord, they'll say, i got to give up, i got to give up, i got to give up. And we tell them, no, you don't, no, you don't, no, you don't. You'll want to give it up. You don't have to do nothing. God gave you free will. You don't have to. Taste and see that the Lord is not good, and then you'll want to quit. You'll want to change. You'll want to do different. And when you do that, his favor comes, and it's cool, it's refreshing, it's strength, and you keep right on going. It's awesome. But you have to spend yourselves in behalf of somebody else. And your night will become like the noonday. Your light will rise in the darkness. There's darkness in people. If they don't have Jesus, there's darkness. And your light will rise up in them and change them. The Lord will guide you always. Listen, God's went nowhere. He sat in the same place he was the day his son died on that cross. He's never left. He sent his son to say that I'll never leave nor forsake you. I'm not leaving you. But you and I have got the little feet he gave us to just walk away and do our own little thing. And he's waiting on us to walk back on that narrow path and get back in line with him. And he'll wait just like the father did for the prodigal son. He's got all the time in the world because it's his. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land. Does anybody need your, your uh, needs satisfied? Oh my gosh. Have I got them? But we got to spend ourselves first, it says. We have to be faithful. We have to be obedient. The Lord will always satisfy your needs. I don't, I don't leave anything out. We can count on that. Always is always. There's no if in that sentence. In a sun-scorched land where there's nothing growing, God will bring something out of nothing every time. And he'll strengthen your frame. You know, when we get weak and we can't just stand another step, he'll strengthen our frame. He'll get us through. He'll send somebody to help us get through. He'll give us the strength. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And if we're doing, if we're obedient, if we're following his calling, then he's joyful. And he'll send us strength to keep on marching to march. You'll be like a well-watered garden. You can't, you, you just can't not produce. A well-watered garden just keeps producing fruit. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to be a well-watered garden. You're going to produce fruit. You'll never be thirsty. Jesus told her, just drink from my cup. You'll never thirst again. You can't run God out. He's, he's got so much for you. You can't run him out. Not even in a sun-scorched land. You'll be like a spring whose waters never fail. Rivers of, of living water will flow from within you. Your people rebuild the ancient ruins. When we get to doing what we're supposed to be doing, then we have the ability, the capability to help rebuild people's lives, their homes, whatever it might be. We have the ability to do that. And we try that so hard here at Destiny. Destiny Life Changers, if you've got a need, you call on them, they're there. Your people, that means us, the church, will rebuild the ancient ruins. The old messes, 
That's what we're called to rebuild, to change, to renew, to restore. That's who Jesus is, a restorer. And will rise up the age-old foundations. See, the foundation's important. That's why we have to make disciples. That's why we have to teach and preach the truth. Because it's a solid foundation for our faith and all these <laughs> blessings to follow. It boils right back down to the foundation. What is your foundation? And that's why we're called to disciple people. You will be a repairer of broken walls, a restorer of streets with dwellings. There are so many broken walls in this place. And I think what's even worse maybe than a broken wall is a wall that's been built up and can't be broken right now. That needs to be. Sometimes we got to demolish the wall before we can rebuild it. We demolished that wall right over there and rebuild it with 50 new chairs. And that's where all the people that get here late and have nowhere to sit, sit. <laughs> Not true. Your people will do it. God uses simple people like you and me to do his work to cause restoration and renewal in somebody's broken heart. Wow. Why would he do that? Because he created us in his image. We died to ourselves. We gave our heart to him and he replaced it with his. A compassionate, unconditional, loving heart. And he uses us to do his work. That's awesome. A restorer of streets with dwellings. He brings up there's dwellings along these streets. We can t walk the streets of Kenneville and it's limitless. The houses, the dwellings that need restored. We'll never run out of work. God will make sure of that. Now, here it gets closer. If it hasn't already. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath, and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord. Wow. Pastor Mike, are you telling me if I work on Sunday, I'm going to hell? Uh-uh. There's a Sabbath day that you need to set aside for the Lord. It can be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It can be Saturday. It can be Sunday. And in all actuality, it needs to be every day. So if you're worshiping and praising the Lord, if you're setting this day aside for the Lord, this, calling it a Sabbath, you don't have to worry about it if you're working Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Because you're setting every day aside for Him. You're calling it Him. You're praising Him, glorifying Him. There's now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. God is not going to condemn you for working on Sunday. But he does want you to set some time aside for him. To worship him and praise him. And give him glory and honor. Yeah. We can't go our own way, he says. And not doing as you please or speaking idle words. Gossip will get us in trouble so fast. We have to be careful who we're talking about and why. These stupid cell phones we got and iPads and iPods and all this junk and Twitter and I don't need no words. Make sure it's not idle words. 
I've done ministry on the phone since 10 o'clock last night. It's crazy if I can go on. I was working yesterday, my phone rings and it says John Wicker. What's up with this? So I answer it and say, what's up, John? I'm in Seattle, Washington, in the airport. He said, I got a girl. Uh, her name's Amanda. He said she was bawling her heart out. He said, I walked over to her and said, what's the matter? And she said, I just got a phone call from my mom in Lansing, Michigan, and she's dying. And I got to get there. John said, I prayed for her, but he said, Mike, she's just a mess. I said, John, would you be a mess? He said, well, we got to get the tickets and stuff to get her boarded. And he said, can you pray with her? And I said, yeah. So they get their stuff all done. Pretty soon the phone rings. And it's John. And I, he said, she's ready to talk to you. And her phone rings, and it's one of the family members. So I said, J let her talk to them. So she talks and talks and talks. And he said, i got to call you back. I think we got to get on a plane. So... It goes a couple more minutes and the phone rings and he says she's off the phone and she needs to talk to you. So I'm praying the whole time, Lord, give me the words. So I talk to her and she's just crying her heart out, bless her little heart. And she says, I, I just need to say mom. And I said, okay, so now we're going to pray for you. I said, listen to me, God has already sent an angel. John's there. You can trust him. If he asks you to do something, you do it. Because he's got your heart at interest. He's an angel from God. Oh, I need to hear that because I didn't know if I could trust him. <laughs> and I'm thinking you're right, sweetheart. <laughs> She quit whimpering and just you could tell it that she was listening and it was getting easier. And I, I prayed for God to have her mama stay alive until at least she could get to her and see her. I said, Lord, I, I need you to connect the flights. I need you to have everything in place for this precious young lady. She's calling on your name. And her mama knows you. She knows you. Please, Lord, honor. And John, about 10 minutes later, he texts me back and he said, I'm ticked. He said, I prayed almost the same prayer as you did. It didn't even touch her. And you pray her and the peace falls all over her. He said, what is up with this? And I texted him back and said, I'll tell you later. Who would have ever thought three years ago that I would be doing ministry in worship? Goofy cell phone. It's limitless. And I'm praying for a good answer so God can strengthen her faith through that. And God used John to help her get everything connected, and it was just awesome. But see, if John would have been strolling with his suitcase, having his business in mind and worried and being focused on John, he'd have walked right by that precious little Amanda and never saw her. Heart of Jesus. We all have to have the heart of Jesus to make a difference in somebody else's life. He'll use anybody. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight, oh, I'd love to go to church, I can't wait. And the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. If you want to ride on the heights of the land, 
you got to follow what God has called you to do. There are so many of us on a roller coaster ride, and I'm telling you, the highs are so high you can't hardly believe it, and then that low, that dip is so low you can't hardly stand it. There's a height that we can ride on and even keel if we're following the Lord and doing what He's called us to do. Is it easy? Uh-uh. That's why we're not to forsake the assembly. We're to all come together.